Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to get started on my Da Vinci Artist Squash review. And the reason why I wanted to jump in with this is because um, I started to hear some things about the squash and I didn't, I wanted to just kind of use it for myself before I let any of that information into my brain basically. And it was pretty well requested when I did my review preview video and I went through things that I purchased um, on sale during like the Black Friday time, stuff I had been intending to review anyway. And I was really curious about this Da Vinci gouache. I've used Da Vinci watercolors for decades. Um, they're really a fantastic value. And so I was really curious about their gouache. They come in 37 ml tubes. They do also offer watercolors in these tubes, but the gouache is actually um, about $5 cheaper than their watercolor for uh, the same color. So um, I'm really curious to see how these behave. I've heard that maybe they're not as opaque as other gouaches, but then I'm thinking, you know, if they're nice and transparent like their watercolor, then it might be and that might be an option, a good option for some. So on the tube, we have, oh, first of all, the, the caps are nice and big, and I kind of was kicking myself because I bought one of those golden tube cap grippers and I meant to keep it right next to my desk in my little caddy and I cannot find that thing. So um, I did have to use a paper towel to kind of grip this and unscrew them to begin with. But uh, they've got a really big neck there. The cap's pretty big too. So I think that will be a little bit easier to remove if you have any dexterity issues. On the, uh, on the tube itself, you have opaque watercolor, permanent artist gouache, Da Vinci, professional quality, raw sienna, this is the, the, the color name, the color number, and then if you look on the back, you've got your light fastness rating. These are all rated one and two. This one's rated one, which is a light fastness of 100 plus years, I believe. Um, excellent. P the pigment number, PBR7, natural iron oxide, carefully dispersed in the finest quality gum, natural gum. And it says creamy consistently, smooth flow, matte finish. Now it may just be the finish. If these end up being kind of transparent, which I've heard that they are, but we're gonna we're gonna figure it out for ourselves. If these end up being transparent, they might just be a little bit more matte, and that might be a preference to some. So I love to get to the bottom of these things, see what what's what, and, um, and go from there. So I've put out uh, five of the colors of the eight that I bought onto this little ceramic palette, and it, this is by a potter named Seth who sells his wares on Etsy, and I will link to this palette if uh, anybody is curious. i got a couple jars of water here, and I've got a paper towel for blotting my brush. So we're going to start off by filling out my little swatch chart here. I'm using the um, just a cellulose paper that I use all the time, and I'm going to start with titanium white. I've dampened my brush just to make sure I can get my paint to a flowable consistency, and I'm just going to do... A, just a just a, a swipe of color. Now I'm also going to do that on some black paper. So I've got some black mixed media paper here. And you know what, let me just grab a dry brush that I haven't wet and go right into the right into the paint itself and just do a little really thick really thick um, application there as well. Okay, I generally will wet my brush before I pick up some gouache, so I want to kind of get a real life uh, situation there. Titanium white is PW6. It's known for being nice and opaque, and it has a light fastness rating of 1, which is excellent on the ASTM rating scale. Our next color, I'm blotting my brush on the paper towel, is Yellow Deep. This is a mix of Pigment Orange 62 and PY73, or di Diarolide Yellow, I believe. Let me just double check, though. Um, Aerolide Yellow. So it's um, monoacetone is PO42, I guess. I'm not familiar with that pigment very much. Um, and PY73 is Aerolide Yellow. All right, we got all our information. I love that they have all that information right there on the tube, so that way I don't have to go and look it up. So let's bring that down over the stripe. This one is very transparent. I'm gonna add a little bit of water, just kind of wash it out a little bit there. That's a, that's really pretty. Um, I'm really curious to see how it dries, so I'm just gonna do a swatch of that on the black. It's very, and I, um, you know what, I'll just go with the other brush. Well, the other brush is a little damp. Let me dry it off super, super dry. Yeah, that yellow is looking pretty transparent, which 
Honestly, if I find that these are more like watercolors and I'm not happy with them as gouache, I'm just going to put them in my watercolor stash. Yeah, that is not opaque. It should dry a little bit more opaque, but... Pretty color though. Really nice color. I'm using two buckets of water by the way, one to clean my brush with and one to get fresh water. So I know I have a nice clean brush. Our next color is Alizarin Crimson. Now Alizarin Crimson is a color that it's a cool based red. Your more cool tones tend to be a little bit more on the translucent side anyway, so um, let's uh, just kind of keep that in mind. It's also a PV19 Alizarin Crimson, which is my preference, so it's not going to be as bloody looking as some other crimsons. I'm actually going to dry this brush off really good, and I'm going to put it into my black swatch first. This color, ah, one of my favorite colors. Ooh, so pretty, so smooth. Does not look like it's very opaque though. But look at that, man. Gorgeous, but not transparent. I can see that black line pretty darn clearly. I'm gonna put, let me just put a little bit of water on here. I don't wanna waste what's on my brush. I just wanna add some water. You know, I think these might be really nice as watercolors. Hmm. I mean, that's not opaque by any stretch of the imagination. I'm hoping that it doesn't dry shiny. It says matte, and I'm hoping it is. Um, just for the sake of gouachiness, but if it's not, I'm still going to use them. I, you know, I paid I paid around ten bucks for each tube because they were sixty percent off. Retail on these are around like twenty four to oh, about twenty twenty to twenty four dollars, I think. Um, but I bought them during the sixty percent off sale they were having on Black Friday, so I figured, what the heck, this is a good time to try them. A lot of people are curious about them, so. Uh, this is ultramarine. This should have a better shot at being opaque because it's a warmer undertoned color. Even though blue is a cool color, it's got a warmer undertone. And ultramarine generally has a larger pigment particle size. I'm still clearly seeing that line though. And I'm painting this pretty thick, thickly. It's, it's straight from the tube, basically. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of water. And I'm just going to wash it out like I did. Oh, you know what? This will be neat to see if this granulates. Uh, let add a little water into there. We'll have to, we'll have to check that out and see if that's going to granulate. I don't know. These are not acting like any gouache that I've used before. And the next color is Stalo Blue, which is a notoriously um, translucent color. So let's dry off our brush really good. Uh, I'm not getting opaque. I'm not getting opaque vibes from this, guys. Um, I bought my paint on Blick Art Materials. They were, the Blick's a little bit cheaper than the Da Vinci site. Da Vinci has a better color selection though, if you buy directly from Da Vinci. So, but when they do their 60% off sale, they allow their vendors to do the same sale. So. Uh, I had some other things I needed to buy at Blick, so I went ahead and bought my um, my Da Vinci gouache there too, because I got the same. Actually, it was a little bit cheaper because the base price was a little bit cheaper on Blick. Um, but then I did end up making an order on Da Vinci because uh, well, that's just pretty. It's uh, I don't know. It's pretty dark, so it's hard to tell if it's transparent or not. But it it looks very transparent here. Um, but so I did end up making an order on Da Vinci 2 because they had a deal where it was like, get these three holiday trio colors for free if you spend a certain amount of money, so, and free shipping, so yeah, they got me, they got me. I don't regret it though, I like what I bought. Um, <laughs> but I spent a lot of money on Da Vinci products. Oh, I also got some watercolor medium, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, these are, the white's opaque, which is what you, what you want for sure. Um, but the other colors are not showing very opaquely. So next what I want to do, um, actually I think I'll do a color wheel first and then we'll go on and swatch the earth tones that I bought. So let's see, I'll start with yellow and I'm going to, I'm actually going to add water to these cause I'm thinking, gosh, these might be a nice watercolor option. So I'm going to fill about a third of the wheel of water. This might be kind of like um, the Mission Titanium class. I'd be really cur curious to see how these dry down in pans. You know, they might be, they might be good for that. Um, 
We'll do our red. The colors are nice and strong. I will give them that. I'm just doing a basic three color primary because uh, I got a little bit more yellow here. Makes a nice, oh, that makes a nice orange. I think I'll go with the phthalo blue. Just because I think it'll mix better with the green. Man, that is so vibrant. I wonder why it's cheaper than the watercolors. I mean, yeah, it's because it's like $5. The colors are like, ooh, look at that green. The colors were running around $5 less than the watercolors for the same size. So um, generally I would think it because, oh my gosh, look at that green though. Generally I would think it would be because there are more, there's more filler in the paint, but I don't know, I'm not seeing any chalkiness, which is weird because you kind of think there would be a little bit of chalkiness with gouache. Again, the phthalo blue, just mixing that up, making it nice purple color. Makes a really dark purple. Let's also try, oh, we'll try to add some, we'll add some white in there too. That's a nice purple, but I also want to try, um, we can mix it right on the, let's mix it right on the palette actually. Let's try the ultramarine blue. And yes, I'm watering this down, so this is this is more of like a watercolor. Yeah, that makes it nice. That makes a nice purple too. All right, let's add in a little bit of white. I think I'll do. I think I'll use a smaller brush though. And maybe these are the types of gouaches where you need to do, you need to add white to them to make them opaque. There are some there, like the Shenhan Pass, Pass has that, that quality where you've got to add the white. If you want it to be opaque, you've got to add your white to it. Ooh, these are pretty though. So maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe that's what you got to do with these. I didn't see any instructions about that. That's a pretty purple though, especially when you add the white to it. Well, if these are super duper dark when you are when you are mixing with them, I mean when you're using them straight from the tube, maybe we do need to add the white. Hmm. I am seeing some shine on that crimson and the phthalo blue now that it's dried. That's not matte. Hmm. I want to add a little bit of white uh, right here because I missed a, it kind of skipped. Hmm. I'm thinking that you could add quite a fair amount of white into that paint before without losing saturation. Hmm. Okay, you know, open mind. You know what I think I need to do though, before I put, before I clean off this palette, I am going to mix a tint. I'm going to put a tint on each of those, on each of those uh, lines, I think. I like the big tubes. Generally, uh, your average tube of gouache is going to be 15 ml, which is less than half of this size. So uh, I think that's good. I think the size is nice. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to take, I'm just going to scoop out two, three, make some little dabs out here so I don't have to dip into the white and save some brush washing, right? Okay, so let's try that plus the yellow. Oh, 
Oh, I should have been a little more... Uh, maybe a little more yellow in there. I don't think I need as much white as I put in. Hmm. We'll see how that dries. I don't think you need as much white because the white is super opaque. Let's try with the red. I dried my brush off. That's a pretty, it got a pretty loose consistency to it. That's getting quite pink. Oh, it's vibrant though. Let's do a little bit more red. And see if we can get the opacity without losing as much of the color. The white was very matte, so I'm... Um... Well, so that's quite opaque looking and that's still quite red. I'm going to try putting a little bit more in. And that's pretty red and that still seems pretty opaque. So I think this is definitely going to be going to be one you have to add the the white to. And I think you might want to because of how shiny that uh, that crimson is on its own. All right, when we're drying off my brush. I'm going to do some of the ultramarine and some white. That's nice and opaque, but it's definitely lightened it quite a bit. A little darker. I, you know what? I think that I think that we'll be able to. I mean, like that's pretty well. That's a pretty good ultramarine color. I think you'll be able to add just a little bit of white and get the opacity you need from some of these colors. I mean, so if I look at all my palette here, these colors that well, you can see. That. I don't need to bring it over. Um, you can see. I mean, these colors still look pretty vibrant. I could add a little more yellow to that, but um, maybe I'll do another little color wheel with those three. Just over to the edge here. Uh, more yellow in the mix there. Starting to dry my palette already. Uh, we'll muddy the color up a bit. Oh, and I also use ultramarine and not phthalo blue, so that's probably that's different than what I did there. It's a bit desaturated, but it's not terrible. But, you know, I spent quite a bit of money on these. I mean, even though considering I bought them on 60% off, um, hmm. yeah, so I spent probably about $80, give or take, on these eight colors. Now let's see the phthalo. That one might be a little bit tougher to pacify. Pretty turquoise color. That looks nice and opaque with the white. I'm gonna sneak a little bit more. Yeah, well, it's got such a strong tinting strength that I think you could just opacify it and be good. It'll be interesting to see how uh, how shiny those are when they dry. All right, so I think white is gonna be the key with those colors. So next, we've got raw sienna right here, PBR7. That's a excellent light fast paint. 
These can be a little bit messy when you open them up. Mm, I'm going to wipe that lid off. I, I've got this big palette from Meaden and I'm trying to decide what I want. To, I want to use it for gouache, but I don't generally, I don't know, I, I have a set that I that I keep in pans that I travel with, but in, for the most part I do like to work with gouache wet. I've gone back and forth, you know? Um, but with the palette that I've got, I've got, I want to decide what brands I want to have in that palette because it would be nice to have a nice studio palette that... Uh, I need to add just a little bit of water so it will flow off my brush. It's kind of a sticky color. See what I mean? How the color wants to break apart. A little bit of water to it. Mm, it's kind of sticky. It's a pretty tone though. Um, right off the, why don't we do a little bit of a, we can mix up a little bit of a, a tint as well. A tint is when we add white, just like we did up there. We'll just do a little, a little tint of it. Next color is yellow ochre. I don't know why I bought both of them. I probably shouldn't have bought yellow ochre and the raw sienna, but I did. Ah, see what I mean? They're kind of like, they're kind of messy. Maybe I'll just try to scoop out that paint from the cap. So it'll be a little bit neater when I go to put it back, put the cap back on. I like yellow ochre a lot. And I use it a lot, but then recently I've been preferring raw sienna in watercolor because it's a little more transparent. So I probably should just got the yellow ochre in the... in the gouache because it generally is just a little bit more opaque even though sometimes you use the same pigment sometimes you see PB, PBR I mean PY43 and PY42 in both burnt sienna and, and uh in oh my gosh in both raw sienna and in yellow ochre but um they're two different pigments I think that might be why I grabbed both of them just because they do use two different pigments in case people are trying to decide which one they would prefer to have A little bit more water down, like a watercolor. That's pretty. And we'll do a tint. Make sure you use a nice dry brush. The white, is, the white actually is really strong as far as tinting the colors. I don't think you need a ton of white. Mm, that's much more opaque than the than the raw sienna it seems it also looks like that's starting to dry with a shine probably because raw sienna is a little bit more of a naturally transparent color and then last we have burnt sienna which I'm gonna actually put right there because I'm gonna be using this palette oh look at that it looks like it's like gonna be a little bit stiffer of a color ah. Isn't this palette cute I'm a sucker for ceramic palettes. They work so well, you know, your colors don't beat up or anything. Not that gouache colors really would beat up, I don't think even on a plastic palette. Okay, let's dry it off. I think I might have to add some waters because this does seem a little bit stiffer, but we'll see. That's pretty smooth actually. Very red burnt sienna. It's PBR7 though, usually if it's a PBR7 it's not as red. If it's a PR 101, it's often quite red. Hmm. All right, let's get a little bit of water in there. That's a pretty, it's a pretty color though. I think I made some pretty nice choices with the colors that I picked. And that's kind of the benefit of, of um, picking your own colors versus going with a set. Although sometimes it's just a lot cheaper to go with a set. And I do kind of like to get the mixing sets of gouache so I can compare apples to apples a little bit better. Like if I'm comparing the Daniel Smith mixing set to the Shin Han mixing set to the Holbein mixing set. 
Uh, now I'm going to do a little bit of white in that and some of that paint. We'll see how that... Yeah, that white is really strong. I'm going to need more burnt sienna. I mean, mass tone it is fairly opaque. Mix into that mass tone a little bit. All right, so we need to let these swatches dry and uh, then we'll come back and have a look at them. So this is what I got for colors. I, I probably should have got a like a lemony yellow as well. That yellow is not what I would call opaque whatsoever. But, and it looks like it's gonna wear down pretty quick. I filled, I've added yellow to my palette twice, I think, since I started. Um, yeah, let's just let it dry and see how she looks. I just realized I forgot to swatch the other colors on the black, so we'll do that really quick. Let me take my brush and clean off the, um, the leftover paint and water. Now, I use these Zen All Media watercolor brushes. Or actually, no, these are Zen All Media, not the watercolor ones. They're golden tacklon brushes, but they've got an acrylic candle, so um, they, if I happen to leave them in the water, it doesn't bother them like it would if they were if they were another type of, like a wooden handle. Actually, I say that and I'm noticing like, you know what? They're, they're plastic, but they're painted. So I'm getting some like paint lifting up there. <laughs> oh gosh, just don't, don't, don't trust a thing I say as you watch my review. All right, so we've got the, the raw sienna here. That's a little bit more opaque on the black. Uh, this is not impressive on black. The white is pretty impressive on the black, but the uh, the colors in mass tone are not. We've got the yellow ochre. We've got the burnt sienna. I mean, I guess I didn't really need to do this because I had the I had the black stripe on my paper, but I really want to see how that white was going to look. All right, so this might not be the best paint for a super dark color, but we're going to let that dry too. And when we come back, we'll have fresh water. And um, heck, by the time we come back, I might have already done a painting with it. I might take a, a bit longer of a break, but that's where we are now. How I'm feeling? I, I don't know. I'm feeling like these are a good quality paint, but I'm also feeling like they're more, they feel more like watercolor than a gouache to me. So yeah, so I just need to play with them and uh, get to know them a little bit better. All right. I don't know if I mentioned it in one of the previous clips, but I thought I would compare these to the same colors in the Da Vinci watercolor line. So I've just got a flat brush here. I'm going to start off with the water and I've got my watercolors. My watercolors are dried down in pans so I will be going from dry watercolor but I will add some water to that as well just to kind of try to make it similar. So first I'll start with the Alizarin Crimson PV19. This is the Da Vinci watercolor. Isn't that such a pretty color? Now I will do the Alizarin Crimson Da Vinci Gouache. Add a little more water to that. Uh, next I will do the, they don't have the same yellow. Um, I will do the ultramarine blue in the Da Vinci watercolor. This is the regular ultramarine, not the French ultramarine. Then I will do the Da Vinci gouache in ultramarine blue. Get to this, make sure I got to the side that's just the fresh paint. Make sure there's not any bits of white in there. Curious if it's going to granulate. 
The next color that I have is uh, Thalo Blue. I'll do the watercolor first. Very vibrant. Oops, I think I got a, uh, I put hand cream on because it's so dry. I think I got some on the paper. And then we'll do the gouache. And I mean, this isn't a truly scientific study because I've had my Da Vinci watercolors for a while in those colors, so. The gouache seems a little bit lighter, but let me get right in there to a good gob of that, make sure I've got enough paint. Then let's see, then we can do uh, yellow ochre. We'll do the watercolor first. And like I mentioned, the watercolors um, are generally a couple bucks more than the gouache. So I'll make sure I don't get into any of the white there. Just being careful not to touch the white, just to get right up to it, you know? Feels like the yellow ochre and the watercolor is more pigmented. Which I would expect, just because it seems like you'd have to have more, you'd have to have some opacifiers in the gouache. Um, the next one would be the uh, Raw Sienna PBR7. This is the watercolor version. And this is the gouache version. I can kind of see a bit of a milkiness when I when I reactivate the dried gouache paint. But the color is pretty similar. It does seem a little bit more opaque and milky on the line there. But pretty close actually. Um, and the last color I had was burnt sienna. Oh, burnt sienna, right here. I have two versions of that, so I'm going to grab my newer one, but it's the same pigment. Uh, watercolor, ooh, super pigmented. And the gouache version, I might need to add a little bit more. can grab a touch more. Hmm, very similar. I feel like I might need to use a little bit more of the gouache for the same color payout though. All right, I don't have the same yellow, but I could do a similar color. I've got Hansi Yellow Deep, which is PY65, or I've got Our Light Yellow, which is PY97. This is, it's a mix of um, PO62 and PY73. So I'm just gonna do Hansi Yellow Deep versus the, um, versus the yellow deep. I think that's probably the, the the most accurate way to do it. But they're not the same pigments. But we can get an idea about the uh, the color consistency or the the pig the just I'd say the watercolor is much stronger, but it could just be that I don't have as much paint there. Ah, this is kind of messy paint. Then again, I don't know, it's pretty close. So I, I just wanted to see like how different 
would the gouache be from the watercolor if you're like, well, geez, why don't I save a couple bucks or I'm teaching a class, why don't I get this gouache instead of, instead of the watercolor? Um, I'm going to have to let it dry to, sh to know for sure, but it does seem, they seem quite similar, but I don't know. I got to let it dry first before I can, before I can make any really good. I like on the ultramarine blue, it's almost like I see a little bit of a scaliness on the gouache thin down like that, that I don't see in the watercolor. Um, and kind of in the phthalo blue as well. But we'll let it dry and then we'll see. We'll see. We'll compare all this at the end. But I thought that'd be an interesting kind of um, comparison. And yeah, so there you have that. We'll, we'll look, at, look at them later when I make my final assessments. All right, I did this painting here with just the gouache. I didn't add anything else to it because I just wanted to see how this was going to behave. And I definitely hit a point where I was kind of like, I'm not really improving it the more I add to it. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily the paint's fault or just me. Um, definitely not as opaque as other gouaches I've used. But one thing that I wanted to try, because this reminded me a lot of, and I'll bring this up a little bit closer so you can see it. This reminded me a lot of the Mission Titanium class gouache. So I thought that I would do a real quick kind of side-by-side -side swatch comparison and see how similar they seemed. So I've got that palette right here and those have dried up in my palette enough that I think it would be a pretty fair, um, test if I swatch them out together. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Um, and I think I will do, uh, I'll do the Magello first and the, um, and the Da Vinci second. So let's see, I'm gonna look at my swatches here to get similar ones. So I think that one is very close to my red. So I'm gonna do the, um, I'll do the Mission Titanium class first. I better write this down because M, D, M, D, M, D, M, D. I don't know how many I have. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. So the mission, we'll do the mission first, but I want to make sure if I have to look at this in the future that I remember. All right, then we'll do a Da Vinci. That feels kind of similar. The next one would be, let's see, what do I have for yellow deep? Probably this one would be the closest. And then at the Da Vinci. They, they feel very similar. Then the next would be, we could do ultramarine blue, which I have right here for mission titanium class here. And then we'll do the Da Vinci. Da Vinci is much more deep. Then let's do, um, oh, let's do white. This is interesting. So this might be a good option if you really like the um, Mission Titanium class because they don't sell um, yeah, that seems about pretty similar um, because they don't sell open stock. So you have to buy the sets and, you know, if you start running out of colors, you could probably find a suitable replacement in the mission, in the mission, uh, the mission titanium, which is their kind of hybrid gouache watercolor. 
Ooh, that looks kind of red, doesn't it? This is a swatch card that came with my palette, so it's not the same paper. So I might be a little bit off, but let's see if I can find a color that's a little bit closer. Maybe I'll try uh, this one right here. This one looks like it might be a little closer. That does look closer. I'm just going to paint over. It's not really fair because I'm mixing two colors together, but I'll give it another swipe. I'll give it another coat of the um, Da Vinci too to keep it a little bit more fair. Eh, merged them together. Oh well. All right. Uh, next, let's see. Let's do Thalo Blue, which I think I think that's probably. Oh, I better clean that out a little bit. That looks a little like looks like I've got a little another color in there. These little pad, these little pans are kind of difficult to get in unless you are using it more like watercolors. I don't think it's bad paint, but as far as it being gouache-like, I just got a big old hair in there. I don't know where that came from. Probably a cat hair. Um, but they're not, yeah, they're not very gouache like. Let's see. Uh, the next one would be let's do raw sienna. Do I have a raw sienna? Yeah, I think this is a raw sienna. And the ocean titanium, I have not, like, I did not pre spray, I just grabbed them off the shelf, and they're they reactivate really well. And these are just whatever, however they've dried today, so I don't really have a, you know, it's not exactly perfectly fair in that respect. But they do have similarities to that. I feel like they're more similar to this, um, this uh, Mission Titanium Class gouache. Those you can get like the set of, I think it's like 34 watercolors, a set of 34 15 ml tubes, so the tubes are half the size of these, and it's like, it varies, but it's usually around $135 and up. I think the $135 probably been the best price I've seen. Um, if you are, if you are looking for that paint, Amazon has, I think it's like a, a site called Crush On or Wave On, I think I've bought um, Mission Gold watercolors from them, those are very similar. The uh, Da Vinci seems a little bit more opaque. I feel like I need to re-swatch the red though because that does not look, it looks really dull on that paper, duller than what my original swatch, my original swatch looked like. So I think maybe I was just running out or maybe I had it contaminated. So let's give that another, let's give that another, another shot. Of course I'm using this from Fresh. It's not exactly the same thing as what I was using the dried pans. I'm giving it another coat, so, you know, not exactly perfect, but I, I didn't feel like that was as bright as it really is. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I mean, those do remind me of each other a lot. I think it's because maybe, um, because this wash is not very opaque, that it makes me feel like they're very, very similar. So... Uh, that might be a great option for those who love this paint but are frustrated about not being able to get open stock because there are a lot more colors with Da Vinci. I'm going to have to look and see how many colors they sell. I don't know if it just tells me right off the bat. Um, oh my gosh, they have 150 mLs of gouache too if you want really big things. Although, I don't know, 37 mLs are pretty big. I would maybe get the the big thing in white. Does it say how many colors they have? Uh, I can find that information. I don't see, but boy, they have a lot, a lot of really nice ones. Um, oh, and they do have a, they do have a set for $30 that's six fifty fifteen 15 ml tubes. This is on the Da Vinci Paint website. It's $30. You get six tubes. You get, um, black magenta, which is PV19, phthalo blue, which is, uh, the color I have there. 
Yellow Light Hansa, which is PW3, which is kind of like a lemon yellow, and Titanium White, which is the PW6. There's a magenta that's PV19, but it'll be a little pinker than what we have there. And um, so you get your primaries in a white and a black. That would probably be a great option. Um, you know, if you want to start, see if you like the paint before you spend a lot of money, I think that would give you a good uh, a good idea about it. And that's on the Da Vinci website. I'm not sure if Blick has it. I'm going to peek really quick over on Blick's page to see if they carry it. Uh, I do not see it on Blick. So, um, yeah, that's a, but that's definitely an option. So um, I'm going to paint play with this a little bit more. I think I'll do another painting with it before I make my final my final thoughts known on this, but um, we'll see you in the next, in a couple seconds, and you'll know what I think. It'll be future time, future Lindsay, but anyway, I'm gonna go have dinner. I just painted pizza, and now I want pizza. My husband brought some home, so I'm super excited for that. See you in a bit. I've done some more work with this gouache, and I'm ready to give a final assessment of it. Um, again, let's look at the tubes of gouaches. They're 37 mLs. There's pigment information on them. They're pretty affordable. Just for reference, this is your average 15 mL size tube of gouache, so this is more than twice as much. Um, and the price, the price is very comparable to this size of gouache and other brands. So that's another thing to keep in mind. I went back and looked, I paid between six and $10 per tube. I don't think, I think it was mostly, I think most of these were between six and $8 uh, during their big sale. They're generally about 50% off on Blick. Um, you know, so the regular list price, I've never seen things sell for that. Um, and Blick is a, about a buck cheaper per tube if you're looking generally. They don't have all the colors, but um, if you have other things to order too and you just want to try a couple tubes, that's what I'd recommend. Um, so yeah, you're getting more than double the paint for about the same price. Now let's talk about the quality of the paint. I don't think they're a bad quality paint, but there are definitely some quirks that are going to make them in my opinion, a little bit unnecessarily difficult. So I enjoyed doing the pizza, the pizza painting. So let's just go through in order of, of how I, how, what I painted here. I did this, the, this painting of the pizza first. This was from the food paint challenge. And, um, and I did kind of the, the cutting board area. This is a time lapse of this on my YouTube channel if you want to see how it came together. Um, I did the background kind of more of a watercolor technique and layered it up till I got it the way I wanted to. And then, um, I kind of started the pizza that, that way too, and honestly, it worked out pretty well. I don't have any weird shiny spots or anything on it, but I think part of that is because I used a lot of white with everything. Now, you can add white to the paint, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't, you know, you can add a little bit of white to get that opacity, get the, you know, matte quality without it doing much to the paint, but, um, but if you want to go for that really strong mass tone, it's a very interesting paint to work with. It almost acts like you're using watercolor straight out of the tube, which isn't a very pleasant experience. Um, but for this technique where I was just doing these kind of muted, more like, I don't want to say pastel because there are some bright like reds in there, but um, where I was either watering it down or adding white, I think the technique worked really well. So if you're a gouache artist who loves to add lots of water or likes to mix white in with their paints, you'll probably have a really um, a really good experience with it. So then I thought, well, I'm going to use a different paper and I'm going to do a couple other little mini paintings and see how that goes. And so I did this little sketchbook layout here. I was using my new sketchbook floozy stencils, so it's kind of just kind of a fun way because I was going through and just making up a bunch of different layouts for the different stencils that I uh, that I have. Um, and it was okay. I was finding a lot of difficulty when I wanted to layer up opaquely though with these. I did like, I was here, I wanted to use it like watercolor and that worked pretty well, although it did dry a lot duller and a lot lighter than what it looked like wet. So these vibrant reds and oranges and yellows really, uh, really dulled down when they dried. Um, I was able to get a nice dark color here. I used the thalo blue and the uh, permanent crim uh, alizarin crimson. That made a nice dark that I could use for a silhouette. A little bit of shininess on that, but not, not enough that it would bother me. So they actually work quite well like watercolors, but they're not quite as luminous as their watercolors. I would just go ahead and buy their watercolors if you want their watercolors. But if you bought these gouache and you're like, ah, I don't know if I'll ever use them, they're not quite working to my the way I like to work, that's an option for them. Um, I use them kind of um, 
uh, a little bit more thickly here, making this little wave, and they layered up all right. They were pretty good. The white's opaque, which is nice, so if you are looking for a cheaper um, tube of white gouache, that does seem to do the trick, um, and that comes in a, a 37ml tube or a 200ml tube, so um, they seem to be just as opaque and matte as other brands that I've used, so that would be a great a great buy in my opinion. Here I did the backgrounds to kind of start off with a watercolor effect, and I wanted to kind of build up opacity as I went, but um, I found that I really couldn't get the really glowing bright greens in an opaque manner because both all of the blues, the yellow, um, the red, it's all so transparent that I had I would have to have white to get the opacity, and then the white just really dulled down the colors. So um, maybe if I had a different assortment of colors, I wouldn't have an issue, but I really wanted to go with like a mixing palette, a limited palette for what I bought, because even though they're not that expensive per tube, um, you know, if you're buying a bunch of tubes, it does get pricey pretty quick. Like, I mean, I think I, this was probably around $60 worth of paint. Um, full price, it would have been, you know, $120, $130. I don't know if, let's see, I got eight tubes, yeah, I, I think I paid around, yeah, it's probably about $60, I would say, maybe 75 I don't know, between 60 and 80 so yeah, it, can, it gets really pricey the more you add on. Now this one here, the little cupcake, I like how that came out a little bit better, because I was adding white to stuff, so that just made it a more gouache and more pleasant experience. Um, I did kind of just palette mud for the background, because uh, I wanted the cupcake to like, kind of glow a little bit more. Um, there's some shininess on the raspberry, where I used the red straight from the tube, which was really not what I want to get when I'm using a gouache, so it was frustrating. While I think the, these paintings are fine, the, the experience of painting, painting these were not as fun as doing the pizza. And so then I'm like, well, I'm going to do one more still life because I love to do still life. And I had some requests to do the still life that I took. I took a photo of our of uh, my husband and my Valentine's. Uh, so I made him some peanut butter balls. He got me flowers and chocolates. And then our cards are sitting out there. And I thought, okay, I'll do a still, I'll do a little still life painting of that. Um, and I, I did not enjoy this experience. I started off, I didn't want to go too watercolory in the background, uh, but I did need, you need to add quite a bit of water to make the paint flow straight out of the tube. It's a very weird consistency. It's a consistency very similar to watercolor. It's kind of, um, it's kind of, <sighs> pasty and stringy and um, it dries really quickly on your palette and it but and it, it dries down well if you want gouache that you can pan it dries down very well um, so that would be a good option for you if you want to do that and they rewet really well so that's another bonus that would probably be my who do I recommend these for would be artists that like to pan their gouache so that they can travel with it um, and rewet as they go and if you like to do kind of a hybrid watercolor technique with it. Um, where I used the red on its own because I wanted to get that really rich dark red tablecloth, I got a lot of shininess there. And this is Arches Cold Press, which isn't a, a slick paper, it's, it's a matte paper, so I mean sometimes that will cut down on any, any shininess, but anywhere I had the red in there and it wasn't mixed with anything, it was just on its own, it's very shiny. Um, and we can go back to the original swatches that I did, and you can see that shininess pretty uh, pretty prevalently on the red and the phthalo blue, and those are just very transparent colors in general, so it almost seems like it needs um, like an opacifier or some sort of chalk in it. Like the ultramarine blue is still transparent, but it's got more of a matte finish. The yellow, um, that yellow is very transparent, but it's not it's not shiny. The the white is fairly opaque. Not the most opaque gouache I've ever used, but it's it's fairly opaque. Um, but no no shininess. The raw sienna has quite a bit of shininess to it, so I would probably uh I probably wouldn't have would have passed. If I had a redo, I would have passed on the raw sienna, maybe grabbed a lemon yellow and maybe a pyrrole red or a cadmium red. Maybe a cadmium red, actually. I think if I was gonna do this, um if I was gonna add to this this um and I, I don't have the their their color list in front of me, but I think if I was gonna add to this, I would get a cadmium red um, light and a cadmium yellow light, so I had kind of, or cadmium yellow lemon, so I had a more opaque, because cadmium colors are more opaque anyway, so that would have given me more of an opaque and hopefully less glossy of an effect. Um, they are more expensive, cadmium colors are more expensive, but I think that in this formulation of their paint it would work a bit better. The yellow ochre and the burnt sienna worked, like, they, they were fairly matte, so I was pretty happy with that. I thought the color 
colors mix pretty well and they're very strong so you can add some white to them without not without knocking back the saturation too much like this was the crimson with a little bit of white because I just wanted to see like can I make it opaque and still keep a lot of that color and to a point you can and uh, like right there that's a pretty good example where I took the um the red and the white and still kept it pretty dark but and still made it opaque but there is definitely that shine to it which I mean look if I catch it catch the light like that there's a lot of shine to that and that is not quality that you typically see in gouache. The blue, I was able to add some white to the blue and make it opaque. Um, but I think it's whatever is in that binder, whatever's making it shiny is making it kind of sticky. It like wants to drag on the paper and cling to the brush. But if you add enough water to make it flow, it performs like watercolor. Um, so for me, it's not my ideal experience with gouache, but if you love the Mission Titanium class, I think you'd like this. Now, I never used the Mission Titanium straight from the tube. I had a palette that a viewer shared with me very generously, and it was fun to use. But I used it more like watercolor, and as watercolor, I enjoyed it. Um, but I would definitely struggle building up, you know, if I had to build up to full opacity. So if you're going to put it in a paint into a, a palette and let it dry and use a more of like an opaque watercolor that isn't super duper opaque as gouache, I think you'd be relatively happy with it. Um, I think there's certain colors you could add to your to your collection and not have any issues like the white, the um, burnt sienna, the yellow ochre, the yellow deep. I'm sure there are others, the ultramarine, but I don't know, not having the opacity on those colors, those are as transparent as watercolors, pretty much. Um, yeah, it wasn't as, if, to me, in my opinion, it wasn't as pleasurable to paint with, uh, and it took me longer than it would in other brands of gouache. Um, and not that I have the most experience of gouache in the world, but um, for my preference for an artist grade gouache, I would prefer Holbein or Daniel Smith. Um, those I find I get a really, they're just really easy to use. I did enjoy this quite a bit and it didn't take me as long as I thought it did. So maybe it's just that the technique, the technique you want to use with these gouache is more of adding white, adding more white than you typically would. Um, keep spraying your palette to keep it moist because it does dry out quickly and yeah, choosing subjects that aren't like super dark, like here are these super dark subjects that I struggled. I did a little bit of um, of a rainbow there because I was just kind of wanting to use up some of the paint on my palette and just see like, why am I getting such a streaky effect? Getting the water control with this gouache I found to be very difficult compared to other gouache. Um, it seemed like I was either going into watercolor territory or I was getting shiny patches. So it was hard to find that, that mid-tone, that delicate balance on a, a painting where I had a lot of saturated colors. I'm uh, probably going too far into the weeds, but um, I did this swatch. I think we did it together, didn't we? Where I did the, uh, it's it's been a while since I started this review. Um, I swatched out the watercolor and the gouache versions of Da Vinci paints because I have the watercolor and gouache versions of some of these colors. And I did find the watercolor versions to be more intense and more saturated, but I have to say the gouache definitely could be used in watercolor. There wasn't a huge difference. Uh, except for the pigmentation just seemed to be higher in the watercolor. Um, but when you do use it like a watercolor, I'm even get the shiny spot on, on the watercolor there, a little bit on their watercolor formula, but on the gouache I'm getting that shiny spot even when I've wa watered it down quite a bit. Um, and I am there in the phthalo blue of the gouache. But yeah, I mean, you definitely could use it as a watercolor. I don't think it's as high quality as their watercolors for that purpose. But um, hey, if you're in a pinch and you've got that, I, I don't think you're really, it's really going to really going to harm you too much. Um, and then the other swatches I want to show you would be the swatches on black. You can see the white is pretty opaque. Like that's, that's, uh, and I'm going to tip it. This is a smooth paper and I'm not getting any shininess on the white, which is good because I was kind of, kind of concerned. So, um, I don't think you're going to go wrong if you want to buy the white for a cheaper alternative. It's PW6. It's, you know, nothing, exotic or or weird but these other colors such shine especially on the smooth paper you can see it very very transparent if i look at the color on the um if you look at the colors on the mass tone swatch this is thalo blue and that's thalo blue those are pretty similar actually but the ultramarine that's much more vibrant um in mass tone and here it's just kind of it's just kind of a dull square you can hardly see what color it is and yeah, I, I, they're disappointing in the opacity range. I think, I mean, color mixing, they're, they're pretty colors. They're just not what I would typically look for in a gouache myself. So yesterday when I was cleaning off my palette, I thought it'd be fun to 
to, I was trying to use up some paint that I had left over and I started mixing some of the regular the base colors with some of the palette mud and I got a lot of beautiful neutrals um, so I think this might be a difficult and I was mixing it with the dirty palette mud um, just to see what I would get and this because the colors I think because they're transparent and they are pretty pigmented it's hard to make mud so if you struggle with making a lot of mud in your gouache maybe this would be a good option for you um, this swatch up here just to uh, refresh your memory was the um, I did the Mission titanium gouache with the next to the Da Vinci in similar colors just to show the difference Very similar to the Mission titanium gouache in my opinion um, Yeah, I, I would say that's probably the most comparable product I could find to this if you're looking to um, uh, To kind of if you've tried that and you want to know what these feel like I definitely feel like the Mission titanium to me anyway uh, would I recommend them? Well, you know, I think you've got the information to decide whether they're going to be for you or not. Maybe I'll try another tube in the future, but for right now, I, uh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sorry I bought them because I was really curious about them and I had a lot of requests for reviews and I got a chance to try them out. Um, I might... I might add them to like my, uh, like I might pan them actually and make a little travel gouache kit with them because I think they'd be really good for that use. Uh, which is generally what I do is um, I'll have some tubes, some pans of regular watercolor and then I will have a few pans of gouache in a, in a set that I go out with. And I'll start with my watercolor layers and then I'll add some white and build up some gouache layers as I go. So this is something that could serve both of those purposes. Um, I mean, there's a lot of paint here, so I definitely want to use them. I don't want to waste them. I might end up using some of the um, the ones that are more watercolory in my, um, like to top off my students' palettes or something. If I'm, well, if I'm teaching like kids or even my adult classes, like my watercolor classes, I might use those for that. I wouldn't hesitate to buy the large tube of white. Um, if I start getting low on white gouache, I have quite a bit right now, but, um, but yeah, I think it might be one of those things that you kind of have to pick and choose and maybe see if another artist has done a comprehensive swatch of this so you could tell what's shiny and what's not. I think from the sampling of colors that I purchased, these would not be the gouache that I would recommend, um, unfortunately. Well, I mean, fortunately or unfortunately, I just, I really wanted to like these and that's why I did so many little tests with them because they're so affordable. They're such a great, they, they seem like such a good value, but they are a little more difficult to use. I think like the jelly gouaches are easier to use um, and a better better value. Um, like with the Anagani set that I've recommended, now they offer a 24 set so you don't have to get the 56 set or 52 or whatever, however big that set is. Um, I think I'd recommend that over. Or maybe you can add this to something. Like, you know, I'm not gonna, I, I don't think you should go home and buy this gouache. I feel bad saying it because I think Da Vinci is a good company, but I, I yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to use it up, but I'm not recommending it other than the white, unless you like the characteristics that I that I laid out for you. I wanted to love them, and I, unfortunately, I don't. Um, I do recommend the watercolors, though. Uh, the watercolors are a workhorse. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess it was a little bit wishful thinking with the squash being so affordable that it would meet all my needs, but... Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you used this? Do you have particular colors you recommend? Maybe you're more you're more uh, experienced with this line of paint and you've used some other colors that don't behave this way. Please let me know. I just went with the most basic primary colors so I wouldn't have to spend an arm and a leg, but I could get a good mixing set because I enjoy gouache more when I'm using fewer colors. Um, so let me know in the comments below what your experience has been. This will help other people. If you've bought these and you are you know, regretting your purchase, try using it when you're doing subjects that are more muted or that you want to add some watercolor, um, that you want to add some watercolor techniques to. I think you'd be happy with that. And I'm probably going to try using these with some of my other paints because there are some qualities here. The, these, the qualities of this paint are very different than, um, than other, than other paints. So if I took this and then I added that to my whole line of my Daniel Smith gouache, which I just have a limited arrangement of each color, or with my shin hand, um, I probably could get some interesting effects. And by mixing like that with, you know, their Scarlet or their Carmine, I could potentially deepen a color and still have it opaque, but have enough of the other pigments in there to cut down on the shininess. 
I'm not sure. I really want to use it up because I have a lot of it. <laughs> and I want to enjoy it because, you know, it's part of the stash and, and uh, um, we want to enjoy what we buy, right? This is interesting. I'm seeing this yellow ochre plus white. I'm seeing quite a bit of shine on that. I wonder why that is because there isn't that much shine on the yellow ochre. But those two mixed together is giving me a, a fair amount of shine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I wanted to love it. It fell short for me, but if you like it, let me know in the comments below. Um, maybe I missed something. Use it like watercolor and it's, and it's not shiny at all. And it's very, and it's quite saturated, but this isn't as wet as you would use watercolor though. I will say that's kind of like in between where you like the gouache consistency and, and what you would use for watercolor. So you're going to go, you would go through more of this gouache to get the same intensity as you would their watercolor. In my opinion, gouache is a little bit cheaper. There's probably less pigment in it compared to the watercolor. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I'm at with the Da Vinci gouache. Um, like I said, I, I want to keep using it just because I bought it. I want to find a way that I love it, but I think it's going to be one of those things, kind of like their watercolors. Um, their watercolors are great workhorses and you throw a tube that you use up often in your, in your stash, see what you think. I think that's what I would probably recommend with this. If you are just bound to determine you want to try this paint, white is going to give you no problems. Um, maybe get a tube or two and add it into the stash, add it to your palette with your other colors, see how it plays and, um, and go that way. And because you may find that you get a color and it's kind of shiny and you need to mix it with another gouache that you have. And then after that, it's fine. But um, yeah, I'm over explaining. Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you're curious about the little layout here and stencils, those are from my uh, sketchbook floozy stencil collection. It comes in different sizes. I'll link that below too if you're curious. I'll link the palette that I used just from a seller on Etsy. Um, this sketchbook is by Artisto and this one here is by Artsy Rosie on Etsy and I'm on my last page. So my goodness gracious, I'm going to need to, well, I'm going to need to dig into my stash because I've got other sketchbooks that really need using and this one has lots of paper. Anyway, there you have it. Da Vinci gouache. <sighs> da Vinci gouache. I wanted to love you so, but you're too transparent. Some of your colors are too shiny, dries out too fast on the palette and it just kind of drags a little bit sticky and weird and stringy. Um, I think it's going to be good for panning, but uh, it's a it's a quirky little bugger. I don't know. Thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my tutorials and reviews. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!